Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So in the previous class we had a uh, introduction to uh, shock waves and uh, we learned that uh, these waves uh, shock waves are present only in uh, supersonic flow. This is something that uh, you have to bear in mind uh, throughout this course uh, that uh, shock waves exist only in uh, supersonic flows. We saw through uh, simple uh, kind of uh, examples. Uh, or analogous uh, analogous example uh, that uh, presence of uh, nonlinearities um, actually uh, sort of uh, allow uh, uh, compression waves uh, which are not really very strong uh, these compression waves can uh, um, coalesce with each other uh, due to a process known as wave steepening. Uh, this is because of the non-linearities in the flow where uh, flow variables are affecting uh, each other and uh, the solution is dependent on flow variables. Uh, and because of that uh, they coalesce to each other and form a uh, shock and uh, mm, shocks are very very thin. So, uh, when we look at uh, uh, gas dynamic analysis we do not uh, actually uh, um, consider uh, these shock waves uh, uh, in the uh, but they are considered as uh, discontinuities uh, so they are not considered in solving the flow field and things like that but uh, as uh, discontinuities so jump conditions across the shock is what is applied when shocks are found in the flow field uh, so uh, now we have to analyze um, uh, these uh, jump conditions uh, across the shock. Uh, so, across a shock uh, uh, pressure, temperature and uh, density increases and uh, mm, uh, velocity decreases, Mach number uh, decreases. So, that is the essential uh, picture. So, now uh, we will apply mm, the uh, conservation equations uh, across the shock. Uh, and uh, here shock is treated as a discontinuity is extremely thin you do not uh, calculate the structure of the shock wave. Mm, so, uh, so, this is the uh, schematic representation uh, that is given here that you have a very thin shock and uh, before the shock uh, these are conditions this is upstream this is upstream and uh, this is downstream. So, you consider two uh, states uh, upstream and downstream of the shock. Uh, for sure, uh, the conditions uh, upstream of the shock has to be um, uh, supersonic that is Mach number should be greater than 1. Uh, now, uh, uh, this uh, is a uh, one dimensional flow and uh, there is no uh, heat transfer or work done. So, it is an adiabatic flow. Uh, please uh, make note it is an adiabatic flow. Um, as we do the equations we will find out um, that uh, shocks generate uh, entropy. So, um, it is not an isentropic flow uh, or it is not an isentropic process. So, uh, the basic equations that you have to apply here uh, are the one dimensional uh, conservation equations uh, this uh, we have already discussed and uh, here one dimensional conservation equation is mass conservation uh, rho 1 u 1 equal to rho 2 u 2 is given over here. Then um, momentum conservation in one dimension p plus rho u square is constant. So, p 1 rho 1 u 1 square is equal to p 2 rho 2 u 2 square. Then energy conservation h 1 u 1 square by 2 uh, equal to h 2 plus u 2 square by 2. 
So, uh, these are the three equations uh, along with an equation of state um, and uh, uh, equations relating thermodynamic relations relating uh, uh, enthalpy as a function of pressure and temperature, uh, this is the most general form and an equation of state. So, if you have these equations, um, you can um, solve for uh, the uh, these three uh, equations. Uh, now, if you can see how many uh, generally uh, the upstream conditions are known. So, pressure, density, temperature and velocity are known. So, we have solved for uh, pressure, density, temperature and velocity. There are four uh, unknowns here. Uh, there are three conservation equations and enthalpy is related to pressure and temperature in a general form uh, by some form like this and there is a fourth equation of uh, state. So, we have a consistent set of equations. So, this can be solved. This is the most general form here no assumptions are used and it can be applied to uh, any gas dynamic flow. So, uh, including if there are uh, changes in uh, uh, the uh, Cp uh, and it is not a calorically perfect gas, you can apply these uh, equations uh, in that case also, but then uh, you may not get uh, closed form solutions in that case. So, uh, for uh, this class we will seek closed form solutions. So, we can understand uh, something about the nature of these uh, normal shocks, how they behave with uh, changes in Mach number and uh, so on. So, uh, we will take uh, the assumption of a perfect gas and uh, calorically perfect gas in uh, particular and let us go through the different uh, steps uh, to help us relate. Uh, the various quantities. Uh, first thing that we would uh, uh, try to uh, relate uh, is the uh, Mach number which is downstream of the shock to the upstream Mach number. And uh, the relation is for a normal shock, a normal shock is uh, normal to the direction of the flow uh, and uh, for that uh, it is always that uh, the uh, downstream Mach number is subsonic and upstream Mach number is uh, supersonic. So, um, how do we go about uh, this process? So, uh, uh, first we consider uh, that uh, the continuity equation rho 1 u 1 is equal to uh, rho 2 u 2 ok. And uh, the uh, direct uh, relation that comes about from here is rho 2 by rho 1 is u 1 by u 2. Now, we can keep this bear this in uh, mind. Now, uh, second equation. So, you if you look at the uh, methodology that is followed over here, you see that uh, this process is uh, completely uh, I mean simultaneous or you have to solve them together. Uh, you cannot solve them separately. You still do not know any uh, variables as of now, but we can uh, through algebraic manipulations of these equations we can get to some uh, relations which will help us to get to the final uh, uh, normal shock relations. So, uh, if you consider the um, momentum equation P 1 rho 1 u 1 square equal to P 2 plus rho 2 u 2 square and uh, divide this by uh, the uh, corresponding um, uh, mass conservation equation. So, I divide everything by the mass, but mass flow in the, uh, is constant. So, uh, I can divide this because rho 1 u 1 is equal to rho 2 u 2. I can do this and uh, on both sides of the equation. So, I get these terms uh, p 1 by rho 1 u 1. So, this comes out as p 1 rho 1 u 1 plus mm, u 1 equal to uh, p 2 by rho 2 uh, u 2 plus u 2. Now, uh, if you uh, look at uh, this and uh, you uh, identify uh, the 
equations here there is a combination p by rho here there is a combination p2 by rho2 and uh, we know that uh, for a perfect gas a square is gamma p by rho so uh, we will uh, try to see how we can bring this information into this equation and you can do that by multiplying and dividing by a gamma and gamma p by rho is a factor here this is one factor here a group and so you can write this as a1 square by gamma u1 plus u1 equal to a2 square by gamma u2 plus u2 now um, at this uh, you can even do a sort of uh, uh, change of you can write this only in terms of uh, u1 minus u2 is a1 square by gamma u2 minus a2 square by gamma u2 minus a1 square by gamma u1. Now here uh, we can introduce mm, the mm, using the alternate form of the energy equation which is a square by gamma minus 1 plus uh, u square by 2 is equal to a star square gamma plus 1 by 2 gamma minus 1. This is the alternate form of the energy equation that we had discussed in terms of the um, sonic uh, quantities. So, from here uh, you can write a square is uh, nothing but um, a star or square um, uh, multiplied by gamma plus 1 by 2 uh, minus uh, u square by 2. Okay. So, uh, now the process is just to uh, use this uh, in this particular equation import it here. So, you can get uh, u1 minus u2 is mm, is star square. So, here it is 1 by comma u2 a star square gamma plus 1 by 2 minus u2 square by 2 minus a star square 1 by gamma u1 a star square gamma plus 1 by 2 minus u1 square by 2. So, you get this uh, equation over here. Uh, now, we will just consider uh, just the right hand side for uh, simplification uh, and uh, try to simplify that uh, part. So, let us look at this. So, we will write it here um, 1 by gamma u1 a star square minus u1 square by 2 minus 1 by gamma u2 it's the other way around so let me just uh, erase this So, 1 by gamma u2 gamma plus 1 by 2 minus u2 square by 2 
and this subtracted by 1 by gamma u1 a star square gamma plus 1 by 2 minus u1 square by 2. Now, uh, the principle being used here is this is an adiabatic flow. For an adiabatic flow, uh, the sonic state remains the same. So, A stars uh, remains the same for both uh, uh, upstream and downstream flows. So, uh, this A star this um, is constant across the shock. So, uh, we have now written it in terms uh, of A star and uh, we can get uh, quantities here uh, common taking these common terms gamma plus 1 by 2 gamma we can get this 1 by u2 minus 1 by u1 uh, plus uh, 1 by 2 gamma and uh, terms relating to u2 uh, u u1 u minus u2 so if you look at the terms you will get this uh, term here and on the uh, right hand side you already had uh, u1 minus uh, u2 which was there uh, over here so this is equal to u1 minus u2 so now uh, take this uh, a term over there uh, okay so um, a star square gamma plus 1 by 2 gamma u1 minus u2 by u1 u2 is equal to so you have uh, this term over here uh, and here you get the equation um, okay so I have missed a part which is yes at this point it is gamma minus 1 by 2 uh, u square so that term has to be included everywhere mm. so this is gamma minus 1 by 2 gamma and uh, so you get uh, this term 1 minus uh, gamma minus 1 by 2 gamma u1 minus u2 so uh, this term turns out to be gamma plus 1 by 2 gamma so uh, you find the common terms are gamma plus 1 by 2 gamma u1 minus u2 and uh, that uh, sort of cancels out you get a square by u1 u2 is equal to uh, 1 or uh, the other one is u1 u2 is equal to a star square. So, if you divide this uh, by a star square you will get u1 by a star uh, u2 by a star equal to 1 with this u1 by a star is something that we already know from our uh, previous discussions it is the star Mach number. So, this uh, gives rise to the relation m1 star multiplied by m2 star is equal to 1. So, this uh, relation is known as Prandtl's relation for uh, the normal shock and it uh, gives us. So, you can observe these uh, manipulations algebraic uh, manipulations where all the equations were used simultaneously to arrive at this uh, conditions and uh, uh, so just to go over these uh, so what we did uh, was that we used the uh, momentum equation and divided it by the uh, uh, mass equation as you have uh, done over here and then Mm, uh, written uh, that equation in terms of uh, the speed of sound over here and uh, then 
use the energy equation the modified form of the energy equation in terms of uh, the uh, star uh, speed of sound and uh, a star and uh, the idea is that a star remains constant in an um, uh, normal shock across a normal shock uh, so we use that information and uh, import that into um, the uh, equation here and uh, then do the simplification using some algebraic manipulations and finally arrive at the condition that uh, m1 m1 uh, m1 star multiplied by m2 star across the shock equal to 1 so now uh, we know the upstream mach number uh, so this gives us a uh, relation to find uh, go ahead and find the downstream mach number now uh, this is in terms of uh, star quantities uh, so uh, we can convert this into the uh, mach number directly into uh, mach number and uh, that is uh, possible so this uh, is uh, all the steps are detailed in the slides which just now uh, we have discussed so this is what we finally arrive at m1 star uh, multiplied by m2 star equal to 1 so uh, now uh, let's look at uh, how to get uh, a single relation between uh, uh, this mach downstream mach number to upstream mach number uh, we use uh, the definition of uh, so m2 star uh, is equal to 1 by m1 star and so we can uh, directly use uh, the relation for m2 star that is gamma plus 1 um, multiplied by m2 square and divided by 2 plus gamma minus 1 m2 square is equal to so it is the inverse so square is inverse of this so uh, you get the inverse so you can put it here uh, 2 plus gamma minus 1 m1 square divided by gamma plus 1 mm, m1 square so uh, now we solve this uh, uh, problem uh, by solving it for uh, m2 square so you get gamma plus 1 m2 square is equal to 2 multiplied by 2 plus gamma minus 1 m1 square gamma plus 1 m1 square and uh, plus gamma minus 1 m2 square multiplied by 2 plus gamma minus 1 m1 square divided by gamma plus 1 m1 square this term can be taken over to the uh, left hand side and then you can take the common term out which is m2 square and you have gamma plus 1 gamma minus 1 uh, 2 plus gamma minus 1 m1 square divided by gamma plus 1 m1 square so if you solve this this turns out to be gamma plus 1 whole square minus gamma minus 1 whole square m1 square minus gamma minus 1 2 divided by gamma plus 1 m1 square and this value is 4 gamma uh, so that is comes into picture here 4 gamma m1 square and you have uh, gamma minus 1 remaining over here and uh, gamma plus 1 on the right hand side you have 2 2 plus gamma minus 1 m1 square by gamma plus 1 m1 square so you have these terms are common they will get uh, cancelled so finally uh, 
the equation is just 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m1 square by gamma m1 square minus gamma minus 1 by 2. So, you find uh, that uh, m2 can be completely represented only in terms of gamma and Mach number uh, before the shock. So, now uh, when we look at all other uh, uh, relations, shock relations, uh, what we will observe is that um, all the properties across the shock uh, can be written only in terms of uh, the upstream Mach number and uh, gamma. Mm, for the f uh, for uh, the conditions that we are taking, which is calorically perfect gas, gamma is a constant. If you know the gas, then uh, gamma is known. So, uh, then uh, the downstream conditions of the shock become only the functions of upstream Mach number. Uh, so, uh, now we can relate. So, now since we know the relation between uh, downstream Mach number and upstream Mach number, uh, we can use this to relate uh, all other flow variables. So, uh, let us look at uh, first we look at um, the density ratio. Uh, so, uh, just to go over what we had just done, uh, we have expressed um, the uh, Mach number that is Mach number downstream of the shock M2 uh, in terms of only uh, Mach number upstream of the shock and gamma. So, we saw how to go about doing this using the uh, Prandtl's uh, relation. Uh, now, uh, we will uh, uh, see how we can use uh, the continuity equation to relate uh, the uh, density ratios across the shock. What we need is uh, rho 2 by rho 1 and uh, rho 2 by rho 1 that is uh, density increases across the shock and from uh, mass conservation equation rho 1 u 1 is equal to rho 2 u 2. Uh, you directly get that uh, u 1 uh, this rho 1 rho 2 by rho 1 is u 1 by u 2. Okay. So, uh, now if you uh, look and uh, multiply and divide by u 1 then you get this as u 1 square by u 1 u 2. Now, u 1 u 2 from our uh, uh, just uh, recently discussed uh, um, equations u 1 u 2 is a star square. So, this is u 1 square by a star square. Now, that is what is written over here and u uh, 1 by u 1 square by a star square is nothing but uh, the star Mach number m 1 square for the upstream flow. And star Mach number is uh, written uh, in terms of Mach number itself gamma plus 1 m 1 square by uh, 2 plus gamma minus 1 uh, m 1 square. So, now uh, we see that uh, uh, the density ratio uh, is also rho 2 by rho 1 is also uh, only function of uh, gamma and upstream Mach number uh, m 2 is function of gamma and um, upstream Mach number. So, to just to distinguish I can put this as F 1 and F 2. So, uh, we will uh, now uh, go ahead and do it for all other variables. So, we have pressure ratio, we have temperature ratio, we have to look at uh, what happens to stagnation temperature, pressure, entropy generation across the shock. So, uh, each of them we will go through in detail and uh, that we will do in the uh, next class and see how these variables uh, vary across the shock wave.